the house where faith is found and all in hope and love abound. They trust their God and serve him still and do in all his holy will. For our daily prayer, we use the order of morning prayer found on page 235 in the Lutheran Service Book or page 024 in the middle section of Treasury of Daily Prayer. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the tenth chapter. And Jesus left there and went to the region of Judea and beyond the Jordan, and crowds gathered to him again, and again, as was his custom, he taught them. And Pharisees came up, and in order to test him asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. 
and if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Samuel Wurgo. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When it comes to such issues as man and woman and marriage and family, we may get the idea that today's problems are a new thing. Though yes, today's problems concerning these things are in a sense unique, the hardness of the hearts of mankind is anything but unique to our day and age. Marriage, life, gender, these things have always been under attack, and a true and godly definition and ordering of these things has always been assaulted. That's not to say that we cannot know or live the truth about these things, but it also is a reality check to the internal and external strife that are manifestations of a sinful fallen world. And so what our Lord speaks in the gospel about these things is essential even for us today. It's been said that Jesus didn't say anything about such controversial and convoluted contemporary topics as same-sex marriage or gender identity. Though we don't hear any outright condemnation necessarily, he does teach us the positive. He does define and uphold the sanctity of marriage and gender as gifts from God. Man in his hard-heartedness and sin has spoiled these gifts. And in his self-justification, man has attempted to excuse himself of any guilt. And so, when the Pharisees came to Jesus in order to test him, either by trying to justify themselves or perhaps by trying to trick or trap Jesus in his words, they ask him a question that was for them a contemporary and a convoluted one. Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? See, they thought they had Moses on their side. And they could quote chapter and verse of the Torah to back up their case. Of course it's lawful. A man could give a certificate of divorce and send her away. A quick fix, an easy out perhaps, but... See, the problem is the Pharisees couldn't get past Moses or the legal ramification. They couldn't see past the loopholes or the letters of the law to get to the true meaning, the foundation. Why Moses, why God gave such a command. It was because of their hardness of heart. It was was because they would not listen, understand, or obey God's word or live and cherish the gifts that God had given. So this provision was made. But Jesus takes them back, takes us back, not to the law of Moses, but to creation. He takes us back not to legal provisions because of sin, but to what God had given in paradise before the fall into sin. Thus, it is what God creates, man and woman, and what God joins together into one flesh that makes marriage and family what it is. But what God does is also not some arbitrary or incidental thing. What God gives in marriage is more than just a nice social arrangement. The intimacy of male and female within this lifelong union of husband and wife is an image and a confession to something bigger, something divine, something eternal. The love of God, the Trinity, and that holy communion of Christ Jesus with his bride, the Church. So, when we mess up what God has created good, when we fiddle outside the order and parameters God has set, be it through sex outside of marriage or the divorce inside of marriage, we distort and ruin that image by our sin. But when we live how God has called us to live, we show forth that image more clearly. This, of course, we haven't kept perfectly. Even the most godly marriage, seemingly perfect one, is not without sin in one way or another. But we shouldn't seek the best legal route to justify ourselves before God because of our sin. We must repent, confess, and receive his forgiveness. Because it's only by the grace of God that he gives such a beautiful gift in the first place. And it is only by his grace that he continues to maintain and provide for us in all of our callings of life. That's not to say that marriage is free of challenges or turmoils, but it does mean that God is faithful to his promises, faithful to what he joins together, and faithful above all else in the gift of forgiveness that he gives through his Son, 
He's given his life for you, his bride. He's purchased and won you, clothed you in that forgiveness, and he is faithful to you. He will never leave you nor forsake you, and not even death will keep you from his love. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, your patience and loving kindness toward us have no end. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we may always think and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty bless us and direct our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us for morning prayer. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you.